guys realize, I, this isn't about me, but last year in August was the first time since I was eight years old that I was not involved in the training camp. Okay? I didn't know what to do with myself. So this is therapeutic for me. So thank you for allowing me to be a part of what we're about to do and embark upon. Those were the comments to open fall practice from the Haggerty family head football coach, Tom Herman, sitting right there. I'm Frank Ford. Coach, uh, we heard those comments. Now that you are back in the saddle, so to speak, does, does life feel normal again? Are you in your comfort zone? Oh, well, it'd be nice if we were moved into my, my house. Uh, you know, I've, I've been living like a nomad for the last nine months while my wife and, and kids get here and, and settled in and we're a couple weeks away, or I guess probably about a week away. August 19th is the, the scheduled delivery for us to finally move in. We've been in an Airbnb together here for the summer and uh, bought a home. But as far as on the field, yeah, it it's really is like riding a bike. It hasn't been difficult at all. It's been joyous. It's been refreshing. It's been rejuvenating, you know. Coach's weekly interview is brought to you by Phil Smith Automotive, driving the Owls to victory together. Uh, at AAC Media Days, you use the term parental to describe your program. Is that born of the fact that in your life, coaches were your father figures for the most part? Yeah, I, I still believe in the student athlete model. Uh, I, I do think, I do believe in name, image, and likeness and, and having the ability to monetize mm -hmm. who you are as a human being. You know, my background, you know, only child, single mom, um, you know, coaches had a major impact in, in raising me as a, as a young man into a, a grown man, if you will. And, and so I tell recruits all the time, that's, that's just how I know how to coach. And uh, the wins and losses will take care of themselves if you get really talented guys that love each other and love their coaches. And the, the, the wins will, will take care of themselves. And by parental meaning thing, when we bring a young man into our program, we're going to shower that young man with unconditional love. Um, we're going to give them every tool and resource known to man to be successful off and on the field. Uh, but much like a parent, we're going to hold them to some, hopefully like parents, uh, we're going to hold them to some very high standards and, um, you know, make them accountable if those standards aren't met, but also educate them on how to, where they went wrong and then how to, how to meet those standards the next time. You've been very emphasizing these two points, ball security and fanatical effort. That's what you demand out of your players. But you've also said uh, you've got to act like a champion before you can be a champion. Kind of in a brief nutshell, what does that entail? Well, the, the, you know, I, I don't think a lack of talent was the reason that we're here, uh, that I'm here as the head coach and, and my staff is here. Uh, you know, we, we've got a talented roster. We'll continue to have a talented roster because of um, our local recruiting base, plus the the rise of FAU athletics in general, uh, and so you know now it's about instilling a championship culture, and you know long before champions win championships, they act like champions. They they have clean locker rooms. They're they're early for every meeting. They're They've got their notebooks out. They they ask questions. They study in their off time. You know that's what champions do and. They don't do it after they win the trophy. They do it in order to get to that trophy. And so that's what we're trying to instill right now is just, you know, how you do everything or how you do anything is how you do everything. And the little things matter. Everything matters in wins and losses on Saturday. Of course, one of the big focuses in fall camp is the quarterback battle. Right now, the guys with the most college experience are Casey Thompson and Daniel Richardson. Are they similar skill set, or do you look at them as having different styles? I think they're they're very similar. That's a good. I've never been asked that question. Everybody wants to know who's starting. I don't know. I don't know who's starting. But in terms of skill set, I think they're both. They've got a smooth, easy, easy release. Uh, I think they see the game very well. Football makes sense as well. It should for a fifth and sixth year senior, respectively. Um, so I, yeah, their skill sets are the same. I think. You know, Casey might have a little bit more twitch in, in the run game uh, aspect of it and the elusiveness, but in terms of seeing the game and the ease of release and accuracy and all that, very similar. It's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. The defense has had some good days in camp. There was one practice earlier this week where they had six interceptions, and then in the first scrimmage, they had two takeaways, including a fumble return for a touchdown by Courtney McBride, but it seemed they were physical. Are you encouraged by what you're seeing on that side of the ball? I, I, I am. I, I thought Thursday's practice 
Coach Bellantoni, our defensive coordinator, Coach Rock, if you will, you know, we, we meet after every practice and kind of general thoughts. And, and he said, Coach, Thursday's practice, that, that, was a, that was a slugfest. I mean, it was haymakers here, haymakers there, offensive explosives, defensive turnovers. It was really, really physical. And, and then we, we scrimmaged, and I, I thought, you know, the defense probably felt a little bit of life from Thursday's practice, and they came out a little bit stronger than uh, the offense. And, but the offense battled back a little bit, too, to make it close to the, at the end. And so uh, your original question of am I pleased with the progress, yeah. We're, 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 if you'd have told me where we're, we're, that we would be at where we're at after nine practices, I'd be happy with that. Well, after Saturday's scrimmage, you had the freshman talent show, but the players demanded that you get up here along with your two coordinators, and you got in to lose it by Eminem. Here's a little taste of that. Oh, it's ready to eat, we come. I'm on the sweat already. Mom's getting nervous. But I'm trying to see calm and ready to drop off. But it's hard for getting what you want. You know, I got the feeling that you didn't need to see the karaoke lyrics. Well, just the, the first stanza. So that's why I handed the phone off, or the microphone off to uh, Coach Fry. And uh, so I did, I, I knew most of the first stanza. And I got a little winded. You know, my, my voice was, is very, very hoarse as it gets every training camp. And so I was kind of felt like I was screaming a little bit. In, and, I, you know, at my age, getting up there screaming into a mic for a while uh, in front of a crowd. I needed a little break, so I didn't know the second stanza, so I figured Charlie, could, Charlie Fry could figure it out. All right, well, Coach Herman is well-versed in pop culture, so we're debuting Coach Herman's Pop Culture Pop Quiz, brought to you by FAU MBA in Sport Management, ranked number 11 globally and also nationally renowned. Visit fau.edu slash sportmanagement. Our category today, One Hit Wonders of the 90s, and this song is still played at sporting events everywhere. You tell me the artist, Jump Around is the song. House of Pain. Bang. Coach, talk to you next week. All right. Thanks, Frank. Coming up next, we'll take you in the trenches at an owl practice. Hey, me, me, me. 39's the mic. With offensive lineman Federico Moranjes wired for sound. Next on Inside the Owl's Burrow. Inside the Owl's Burrow is presented by Baptist Health Orthopedic Care, the official sports medicine provider of Florida Atlantic Athletics. By Cedar Foods, Cedars, no better hummus. By FAU MBA in Sport Management, helping the sports and entertainment executives of tomorrow. By Phil Smith Acura, driving the Owls to victory together in style. By Sage Dental, official dental provider of FAU Athletics. Book at mysagedental.com. And by Shiner Law Group, the injury lawyers that get you more because you deserve more. I want to see if our culture can sustain and has grown from the spring game until now. We want to dominate our gap, man. Dominate your gap first. Good, strike on the rise, strike on the rise. Here we go, set. Good, come back. Yeah, we're going to better. We got to step our game up. We got to be able to key and diagnose. Hey, baby! Shit it! Shit it! Every now and then we gotta bring the juice. Alright, but then there's gonna be them workman days. And on those workman days, I'm gonna expect little things like finishing after you catch it. Hey, family on three, family on three, one, two, three. Family. Welcome back to this kickoff edition of Inside the Owls Burrow. I'm Frank Fort. For any football team, success starts up front along the line of scrimmage. Well, we put a microphone on center Federico Moranjes to give you a better idea of what it looks and sounds like when the ball is snapped and the pads pop. Wired for Sound is brought to you by Shiner Law Group, injury lawyers that get you more because you deserve more. Three, I'm ready. 
bitching, Bob. When I get tired, I don't. I just don't like. I'm not gonna talk to people. I'm gonna make my calls and then just like stay quiet for the rest of the day. So I think it was a, it was a mistake. I'm like a little nervous. Is this how it goes? I am mic'd up. Slow and collect. <laughs> we don't we don't trip in this room. There you go. More hips. Good. Next. Hey, so two guys up at a time. More hips. Hey, so you start off on the right foot. Those are the hips I'm talking about. Huddle, huddle. <laughs> Middle wait, linebacker wait. wasn't in the box. When he walks out of the box, they're blitzing every time, right? Okay. I, ca I called cage. Is that bad? All right. Single 22. Pretty vocal, you know. I guess it's like part about being center or something. Let's win the. I'm not trying to do any up downs. Hey, bang, bang! <laughs> Both ran in. Yeah, you, you were a little more aggressive than you. <laughs> and then when we both ran in, you were like, ah, okay, one of you get out. Hey, Ray, 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 me, me, me. You saw the pancake? A single 52. Solo, solo. Like two out of the three plays, he was off sides. That's why he fell in the first one because he jumped off sides, he stopped, he then fell. Hey, 5 0. Hell yeah! It's another FAU Owls first down. Quick, Larry. Hey, Posey. Hey. I just needed some oxygen. Coming up, as the quarterback battle begins, former Dade County star Daniel Richardson is right in the thick of that fight. We'll tell you about him when Inside the Owls Burrow returns. We're back on Inside the Owls Burrow. I'm Frank Fort. As fall camp started, so too did the battle at quarterback. FAU brought in two transfers at the position during the offseason, ex-Texas and Nebraska quarterback Casey Thompson and former Miami-Dade County passing record holder Daniel Richardson. His quarterback's coach at Central Michigan was new Owl offensive coordinator Charlie Fry. This player feature is brought to you by Sage Dental, official dental provider of FAU Athletics. You had success at Central Michigan. In fact, you played for Coach Fry back in 2020. So how did that relationship, how did that factor into your decision to come here? Well, you know, I've been under Coach Fry as soon as I got into college. And him being my office of coordinator slash quarterback coach meant a lot because, you know, he played in the NFL. He was at Akron, which was a school also in the MAC. you know. He's just a great guy and, you know, Number one thing he pretty much preached was, you know, making great decisions as a quarterback. And if you alert it, what's the rule? You better hit it. You better hit it. So, you know, he left, he went on, you know, to go his journey to the NFL, and he was just recently at Penn State, and when he ended up coming here with me at FAU, it was just, it was just another, like, really big accomplishment, as you say. What do you feel you bring to the table as a quarterback for this program? Number one thing I think I bring is leadership. I will say that I'm a vocal leader on and off the field. I mean, sometimes it won't be a lot of rah-rah, but I do a lot of stuff behind the scenes and, and I know how to talk to my guys. And one, number one thing is I, I think playing quarterback, you have to be able to have a relationship in the locker room. You gotta be able to love one another, one, one another. And when you're able to do that, everybody will play for each other. And that's just, you know, quarterback role, you know making great decisions that I picked up, you know, make, being able to make the right throws, correct reads, and that's truly what a quarterback is. This spring, what were you trying to show the coaches 
I mean, they can look on tape and see, okay, he can make this throw. We can call that route because he can make that throw. But what were you trying to show the coaches outside of what they could see on tape? That they can trust me with the ball in my hands and that I could command the team, not just offensively, but defensively and special team. Just be, be an all-around guy, you know, to be that leader when, when things are not going right, when we hit adversity, got to be the guy to pick, pick everybody up, like, let's get this going. And, you know, I think I did a pretty good job, you know, per se, um, this spring. You know, spring game went, went very well. Hats off to the offensive line and, you know, the receivers making plays for me. But I, I couldn't get it done without the coaches make, putting me in the right position, you know, making the right calls. There's so many more qualities that it takes to be successful, you know, at this position. And a lot of it is you can't measure it. It's, it's, it's what's in your ticker, man. What's your fight about? How smart are you? How tough are you? Those are the things that, that, that D. Rich has. So that's why he's been able to uh, have success at this level. You're not the biggest quarterback around, but when you look at guys like in the league, Kyler Murray, Tua, Russell Wilson, this year Bryce Young in the draft, have you ever felt height was an impediment to what you wanted to accomplish? Not at all. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's height. With how, you, how they say it, it's hard over height. I feel that, you know, at the end of the day, not how tall you are, but what can you do with the ball in your hand? And, and all those guys that you mentioned are very special. And they have their unique way of playing a game of football. And I think I have my own unique way. At the end of the day, when you have the ball in your hand, you have to still make great decisions as a quarterback, you know, not turn the ball over and just being that leader. That, that's what they're looking for. And, and be able to command everybody and get everybody on one accord, it'll be successful. Having confidence, confidence is a big word as that. And you know, when you have confidence, you, you, you mean it. You know, you go in with it. Confidence can mean, you know, when you run in this play that it's going to work. So I'm having confidence with everything I do when I speak. I want to make sure it's confident. I'm confident when I speak. And you know, it just go hand in hand. Straight ahead, the hard work of the offseason will show you what that strength and conditioning program looked like next on Inside the Owls Borough. Inside the Owls Borough is presented by Baptist Health Orthopedic Care, the official sports medicine provider of Florida Atlantic Athletics. By Cedar Foods, Cedars, no better hummus. By FAU MBA in Sport Management, nationally renowned and ranked number 11 globally by Phil Smith Kia, driving the Owls to victory together in style. By Sage Dental, the official dental provider of FAU Athletics, book at mysagedental.com. And by Shiner Law Group, the injury lawyers that get you more because you deserve more. The Owls first season in the American Athletic Conference lines up this way. Back-to-back -back games at home with Monmouth and Ohio to open the season, followed by a pair of road games against Power 5 foes at Clemson in a game on ACC Network and at Illinois. October marks the start of the in-conference schedule with the Owls hosting Tulsa at FAU Stadium. Then on the road at South Florida, a huge test at home against UTSA and a primetime ESPN Friday night game at Charlotte. November brings this slate on the road at UAB home for East Carolina, and then senior night versus Tulane. Then the regular season finale is the Battle of the Owls on the road at Rice. Going into the season, the Owls feel they have the weapons at the skill positions on offense. Wide receiver Lejante Wester accounted for nine touchdowns in 2022, and his unit will be counted on to provide explosive plays. Definitely one of our stronger units on the team. Um, I feel like our group brings brain, the most juice. Um, and really the energy of the team, like everybody build off us. I feel like we got the most, like we have the most depth as of right now. I feel like anybody can go in right now and, and, and go for a 100 yard game at any given time. I feel like winning is gonna make everything else great for like me individually. So I just wanna win as a team. To get ready for that schedule, the Owls put in a ton of work in the off season, conditioning and gaining strength and speed. We're more focused than we've ever been. We've eliminated distractions, we're going into camp. I feel like a lot of kids are confident in the work they put in. I feel uh, we feel united as a team. I think there's a great sense of unit pride. 
um, and, and just overall focus of the summer was at the highest I've seen since I've been here. So, you know, these guys are chomping at the bit to go compete. Control the rep in front of you and attack it with maximum effort, maximum focus. Okay. That's our show for this week. I'm Frank Fort. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week on Inside the Owls Borough. We leave you this week with some scenes from the Owls Fan Fest at FAU Stadium, including linebacker Jalen Wester joking with the head coach. So how to get to the next level? Well, so you want to play Pee Wee football? I want to play at the highest level, where you're at. Eat your vegetables. Thank you, sir. This is Tom Herman. This is Tom. Guys, this is Tom, the one and only Tom, oh my God. This has been a presentation of Playfly. Yeah.